Hi again, I'm Carson from Guys With Games. Today we're going to play a bingo game. I call it Bingo Pictionary because there's some drawing involved. Um, the things you'll need to play this game, every student is going to need a piece of paper and then his or her own pencil and they'll probably want an eraser too. But prepare a piece of paper for everybody. Give one out when you're going to play this game to each person and then have them fold it in half four times creating a 4x4 four four grid like you see on the whiteboard. And then I'm going to do my work up on the whiteboard and they are going to kind of follow along on their paper. Okay. Also, beforehand, you're going to need to prepare the 16 words that you want to review. So before I tell you how to play the game, let's talk about why we would play this game in our class. First, this is a review activity. I'm not going to be teaching new things with this game. I'm going to be using this game to try to commit 16 items into my students' long-term memory, probably for spelling, spelling practice. But you could also do it with the meaning of the word or the part of speech that the word is. Okay, let's get back to the game. So preparation, you're going to need to identify the 16 words or concepts that you want your students to commit to their long-term memory. Now, I'm going to take a look at this and I am going to choose one of the words and I'm going to draw a picture to represent that word. Now, this you might think this works easiest with nouns, and it does, but it's not limited to nouns. So I'm going to give you some examples of nouns, verbs, adjectives, and prepositions, and I'll show you how they work in this game. Now, another thing that you need to be able to tell your students is, look, I'm going to draw a picture in this square, but we're playing bingo. And if you've ever played bingo, you will notice that everybody has a different card. We're all going to have the same 16 pictures and words on our paper, but you can choose where you put this particular word. So let's say we'll start with number one, skateboard. Okay, we're going to draw a skateboard. I want to draw a skateboard here, but you can draw your skateboard wherever you want. If you want to follow me, that's okay. But remember, if everybody follows me and we draw the same map, then we all win at the same time. So I suggest that you draw a different bingo board. Let's draw a skateboard. There's a skateboard. Before we continue, let's learn how do you spell skateboard. And here I'll ask the students and somebody will guess. Okay, skateboard. S K A T E B O A R D. Skateboard. Good. If they're wrong, I'll correct them. We'll write it on the whiteboard and I'll have everybody not only draw the picture, but also write the word. If you are practicing parts of speech, we might say, oh, we're learning the, the thing, skateboard, not the action. So let's write noun here and we'll make a note to ourselves. This is a noun, it's skateboard, and this is how you use it. So we're encapsulating three pieces of information here. Here is a picture of, of what that is. If they're able to do this, then they would know exactly what this thing is. Here is the word. If they're able to do this, they know how to spell it. Here is the part of speech. If they're able to remember this, they know what kind of word this thing is. So let me fill up the board and I'll come back and we'll take a look at how you finish playing the game. Okay, my work on the board is complete. At this point, all the students' papers will be complete also. We need to move them along quickly though. We don't want to spend too much time making this board for us to play a game. But remember, the learning happens in the experience of actually making it. Playing the game is just kind of a bonus. So how do I move them along quickly? Well, I try to keep my pace up as fast as I want them to, to move. So I'll draw a picture and then I'll ask them, how do you spell this word? What kind of word is it? We'll write it down and correcting them if they're wrong. and then ready go you start copying it and I'll start drawing the next picture and they have until I draw the next picture to finish and then I'll say okay stop what about this one what is it and how do you spell it and we'll move them along quickly so maybe I don't know 10 minutes creating the board and then we have we're complete we're ready to play uh, another thing before I show you how to actually play the game I wouldn't do this in the real version I would normally spread these all around but I have drawn verbs 
prepositions, nouns, and adjectives on the whiteboard as an example to you just to prove that they don't all need to be tangible items for you to be able to draw a picture to represent that concept. Here's a prepos prepositional phrase. There's a boy in front of the TV. So you just use a little bit of creativity and the students will follow. They don't need to think of what to draw because you're drawing it for them. Okay. At the end, if you can remember, I have my piece of paper where I have already prepared my vocabulary. So I'll rip these into 16 little squares. I'll take off my hat, put the squares in there, and I'll pass it around. Okay, Jenny, you can pull one out, okay? She pulls one out, what is it? Maybe she draws a uh, beside. Okay, good. So at this point, I'll have everyone take out a highlighter. I don't wanna just like delete all the work that we've done. I'll have them highlight the word, and then we'll move on to the next student. So, what are they going for here? It's a race to see who can get a bingo. A bingo, four in a row this way, or up and down, or diagonally. Or if you wanna play four corners, play four corners. Four corners is a bingo. That's great. You can decide whatever it seems uh, most interesting to your students. If we've done 10 or 12 minutes of preparation and it's done in, 30 seconds of actually playing it, I might say, okay, uh, you were super lucky, Billy. You got it in you know, record time. So Billy, you win. You win the small prize, whatever it is. And I'll play again. I'll say, okay, well, let's just keep going. And the first person to have two bingos. So not only one line, but two lines somewhere. Or the first person to have four corners. You also win the game. And that's how we'll play. So. The point, again, is committing this to long-term memory. They get that through the experience of having an enjoyable time, understanding the concept of the picture, guessing the right word, spelling it, putting the part of speech up there, and then they play a game and possibly win a prize. Anyway, that's how you play Bingo Pictionary. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find it useful on your review days. But we'll see you again next week with a new game. Thanks again. Bye-bye.